So ever since that first iPhone 13 Pro cinematic video that I made, I've been really impressed with this phone. And I've been having a lot of fun shooting with it. Now, ever since I got the A7 IV, I've been having just as much fun shooting with it. But as you can see, it is a much bigger setup. So to satisfy my own curiosity, I want to know, is this camera better than the iPhone 13 Pro? And I want to know if you guys can tell the difference. So in today's video, I'm going to be shooting them head to head. And on the iPhone, I will be using a combination of the cinematic mode, regular video mode, and the ProRes, which is what I'm shooting with right now. So. Let's put these up head to head and see if anybody can tell me. So we are all wrapped up filming the scenes for this video and I wanted to jump on camera because I wanted to talk a little bit about where we are as well and where we decided to film it. Now we are in Kreuzberg, which is a borough in Berlin. We don't call them boroughs here, we call them just uh, districts. Yeah. And um, I've talked about it before, there's 12 of them. But anyway, this area is really interesting because it's super lively at night. Lots of really cool things to do, but really why I wanted to come down here was there's this beautiful bridge right behind me and the Molecule Men, which either you'll see that footage soon or you've already seen it, but there's the Molecule Men way over there. It's like a little art piece from a designer from the United States. I believe he's from New York. I'll throw up his name if I can find it. There's the Universal Music Building over here and then this is the uh, beautiful bridge, which is called Obobom Broker. Yeah, I always get cat to say all the names because <laughs> I have such a hard time with them. But what's also really beautiful is that sunset. You get the Alex right behind us. But yeah, that is uh, going to be it for this part. I'm going to head home edit this footage and we're gonna see if you and myself and all of us can tell which was shot on the iPhone 13 Pro and which was shot on the Sony a7 IV. Okay, so we'll see you in a bit.
have it. Now, before I get into my final thoughts, I'd like to take a moment to ask you to consider subscribing to the channel because that would be really helpful. And if you do, thank you. As far as the footage is concerned, I was really impressed how well the footage matched up to each other. I was shooting with S Cinetone on the Sony because that's typically what I would shoot with. And because of that, the iPhone footage comes out super saturated. So to be fully transparent, I did desaturate it and make exposure corrections on both the Sony and the iPhone just to make sure they matched up well. And in my opinion, they really, really did. The biggest downfall that the iPhone has in certain scenes is that it is way over sharpened. And you can clearly see in the segment where I sit down and talk to the camera, it just looks really sharp as well as the shot from Club Visionaire, the side by side, you can clearly see in the trees that it's just way too sharp. And to me personally, I don't really think that is an attractive look, but that's personal opinion. But the other thing is it really, really handled well when there was some good sun and good light and there was a little bit of that environmental haze. The deep shot using the telephoto lens of the bridge, to be honest, there were times where I thought that I had chosen the, uh, the Sony shot. Actually, I don't even think I had a Sony shot of that. And it looks like it could have been from the Sony 85. So depending on the light and the situation, I think the footage looks absolutely amazing. Now, as far as cinematic mode goes, I've talked before in my original video how I was really impressed with the footage. And it's certainly not perfect, as you could see. But what I really enjoyed about working with that footage this time around is now you can just shoot the scene. The iPhone will automatically track all the different subjects and different focus points available using sort of the keyframes. And when you get that footage back, you can just airdrop it to your MacBook, import it into Final Cut, and turn on the cinematic mode, and it'll allow you to change the depth of field, the f-stop, as well as pick your different focusing points. So it gives you a lot of flexibility there. The, the footage in this case obviously was conformed to the 23.98 uh, timeline, as well as upscale to 4K, and I think it looks pretty good. The, the, we shot it a little close to the pillar, so it didn't quite cut out the, the post as well as I wanted to before it tracked over to the, uh, the U-Bahn, the subway. But I'm excited for that technology. And in, I think in certain situations, you can get away with it if you want to create something creative or um, some short form content. But having said all that, after doing this, it's really nice to know that if I don't want to bring up my big rig in certain situations and something comes up, I have my iPhone with me at all times and I can get a shot and then use it later in a video that I want to make. So if you've been thinking about making videos and you don't have a camera like a mirrorless or a professional one like the one I'm using, but you have an iPhone, then I hope it gives you enough confidence and enthusiasm to start making videos and to start a channel if that's what you've been thinking about. So. If it's been helpful and you've enjoyed watching this video, please give it a thumbs up and go out and have fun making videos. And so as always, live passionately and stay inspired. Bye.